normally tag that the engine that make an economy work. But then again, is there oil to make this engine work properly? Welcome to the MSME Good Chat series by Lofty Inc. And as we do on the episode of this program, we will be talking about and highlighting MSMEs and the good work they are doing, how these MSMEs have grown from the ground up and what are the strides that they have made in the course of running a business. That's really the focal point of these podcasts. My name is Christiana Amodio and I am your host for this podcast. MSMEs grow over the years with millions of them in Nigeria. How are they functioning? How are they thriving? What are the challenges that they have faced in the process of growing and getting to the point where they are? These are some of the issues we'll be discussing on today's episode. It promises to be insightful. It promises to be knowledgeable. It promises to give you a point, to give you a few points to start your business. And I have a very remarkable guest with me today. Distinguished, I must say, she has made strides in the business and the sector that she is working in. So grab a drink. It's about to be a very, very, very intellectual ride, I promise you. Now I want you to meet my guest for today. Her name is Edith Ubini Otori. She is the Chief Executive Officer at Lagos Data School. Welcome to this episode of MSME Good Chat. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You look like somebody that is striving <laughs> in the business environment. But I know that sometimes what we see on the outside is not what really goes on in the inside. Tell us, what do you do? What is your business? Okay. I am a digital entrepreneur with over 12 years experience in marketing, customer service, communication, and business planning. Mm. At Lagos Data School, we train workplace professionals okay. in digital skills and management-based skills to enable them have competitive advantage wherever they are. Mm. Yes. I must say, very, very important skills that businesses need <laughs> in this time because um, I remember when I had a guest on the podcast and she mentioned about how having the right digital skills have really helped her to be able to clinch onto opportunities as they come. I want you to tell me, how has the journey been? <laughs> mm. the, 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 the big sigh, I think, says it all. But tell me, how has the journey been? We can all agree that Nigerians are entrepreneurial in nature. Sure. And this has their benefits. However, some of the challenges we have faced over the past few years, I would want to list out three. Because mm -hmm. these three stood out for me. The first would be the high cost of rent. Mm. You can agree that for the past few years, yes. the cost of rent for both residential and workplace has skyrocketed beyond normal. Yes. And for a private organization or the MSMEs, for you to be able to afford a conducive mm. environment for your clients, for your prospect to visit you, you should, you should have between two to five millionaire. I'm only being fair. Yes. Yes, I'm only being fair saying that, and this is annually. Mm. And because of such challenges in the country, how do you expect these MSMEs to generate their revenue? Mm. So the high cost of rent is one thing that has actually been a challenge True. for most M MSMEs. And the second one I would like to talk about is the high cost of operation. Mm. I'm going to relate this with everyone. Yeah. For example, you have your phone yeah. where you subscribe monthly mm -hmm. so we assume you may have subscribed for a month mm -hmm. but it comes down to three to five days true that is just for individuals true. so you can just imagine what the organizations are going through in terms of subscriptions mm. what about the electricity the band a's the b's <laughs> the band a's to d's <laughs> yes it's actually affecting most organizations mm. and it's something I believe can be worked on. Sure. And the third one would be the fear. Mm. The fact that we don't even know the amount we to buy precisely. Mm -hmm. you, you can only get that from the NNPC. Yes. But how many people would want to queue for that? Mm -hmm. Owing to the fact that that not even being available, the fear for you to even access it it's even difficult sure. because you wake up one morning and then they're telling you 
they see us positive and then you have to start again mm. when you start from the get fuel so whenever there's no electricity it boils down to we have to get the fuel from it so this high cost of operations are really affecting business and the third one which i found really profound would be the access to credit which is I, the, the big the big one in the room oh yes <laughs> i believe if an organization has banked with a particular bank for a while. Yeah. They already know the inflows of this organization. True. So the, for them to access loans shouldn't be so difficult. But the process you would have to go through to be able to achieve that, you have to source for money as well. Mm. So I believe if those three things can be worked on, the MSME sector would grow. Uh, I must say, challenges. <laughs> the story, as it, it sounds like a never-ending tale, but I also want to ask you other high points, highlights, since you started your business, what are the remarkable high points that you have achieved? Okay. One of our futuristic goal is to become a high-tech or Pan-Africa Institute. Yeah. And this has, be this has become an idea from the past few years, mm -hmm. owing to the fact that this organization has grown to the point that we have to scale to sure. a higher place. Yeah. Yes. So some of the highlights would be, we do data analysis in my organization, mm -hmm. and data analysis has come to stay for most technological world, mm -hmm. and it has helped, and one of the competitive skills yeah. we have thus far yeah. in the country, one of the top five we have in the country. and. How this has helped us, it has helped us to target our audience to know who to market our business to. Mm -hmm. We found out that we are not looking at the lower gener the younger generation. Yeah. We are not looking at the older generation, mm -hmm. but rather the professionals. So this has guided us mm -hmm. in developing our business plan and strategies. So I would say that is one of the highlights that yeah. it has done for us. Yeah. And then secondly, it has helped us to overcome, despite the challenges that we are facing, mm -hmm. it has made, made us stronger mm -hmm. in different aspects that in our wildest imagination yeah. would never have come to pass. So one of the highlights that we talk about would be that it has helped us to create our target audience mm -hmm. and it has also helped us to achieve different circumstances yeah. in the way we think to be able to do that. I also want to want you to speak to being a woman leader in your sector, in your organization, because um, we have we have a very broad MSME sector and the informal sector largely, we know we have a lot of women in the informal sector, but as a CEO that is a woman that leads an organization, tell me how the journey is, how are you evolving <laughs> around that? Speak to me about, tell me your story. Wow. I've actually been a competitive person for mm. quite some time. So it has always been in me. So getting to this stage, it's, it's not a surprise to okay. a lot of people. I like my, that. Friends, <laughs> yeah. my friends would say, give Edith your business mm. and you can sleep. Yeah, it's something I've always known how to do. Yeah. But working in the field of data analysis, something I stumbled upon. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my first degree is in computer science. Mm. So people would have thought I would go fully exactly, into IT, but exactly. I did not initially. <laughs> yes. yes. But I somehow stumbled upon this. However, speaking of that, auditing firm Deloitte confirms that the ratio of women to men mm -hmm. in the IT or digital field is one to four. Mm. which makes the women have 25% mm. and the men 75%. Mm -hmm. So this is something we've been advocating for, to make the women more competitive in the digital field and in their workspace. Mm. So as a lady, I would encourage them to upskill in whatever area they are. And the good thing about such skill is you can actually do it. For example, I'll bring it back home to yeah. my institute. Yes. We train from the foundation. So most people do not have the prior knowledge. However, we guide you, know what you've been doing for the past few years, mm -hmm. and know the next step that you can make to achieve the, your goal or your dream. 
So that is one of the things we do at Lagos Data School. We guide people and to ensure that they reach their goals. So for every ladies out there, it is possible for you to do that. And I will always encourage you and give my support to any lady who yeah. is interested in moving on. Which is very me. important, hand-holding. Yes. You have climbed and it is very important to also see that other women, young women also climb to the level that you have gotten. So I want you to speak to areas of collaboration. In your business, you spoke to access to finance, which we know is the big <laughs> elephant in the room when we are talking about MSMEs. Access to finance comes first. How these 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 business owners can access finance, access grants, as the case may be. Even as an organization at Lofty Inc., we try to see how we can connect the startups, the businesses that we work with, to opportunities that they can eventually get to get finance for their mm -hmm. business. I want you to speak to collaborations, areas of partnership. If if more if maybe did not lead to you getting money, but areas of collaboration or partnership that has helped your business grow. Okay. That's always an advice I give to organizations. Whenever I have conversations, mm. whenever I'm opportune to have this discuss, yeah. I inform them that it is very necessary for them to have partnerships okay. and collaborations because this helps in upscaling your business. For example, you're not just doing that for your organization. True. You can also put your organization, Nigeria and Africa, on a global scale. So if anyone is opportune and which i largely advocate for mm. it is important for you to partner and collaborate with i will use the word global <laughs> this one you're saying global i hope there's there's a room for partnership with even local companies of course, because of i course. think it's important for businesses to also mm. support each other yeah. in that process of growth and that process of development um, mm -hmm. I also want you to speak to aspirations. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I can wake you up and say, Edith, in the next five, five years might be too small considering your sector. In the next, say, 10 years, what do you see the Lagos Data School becoming? What are your aspirations for this business? Okay, I earlier mentioned that one of our futuristic goal is to turn Lagos Data School into a pan-African institute. Mm -hmm to create a robust workspace for individuals and in the digital world to collaborate with everybody, to make them competitive yeah. in the technological world and yeah. compliance as well. Also, in terms of impact, how would you speak to the impact you have had? In terms of the people you have been able to impact the skills and knowledge in, and also is that translating into success stories for the Lagos Data School? Yes. One of our impacts would say it always comes back, it comes back to us. Yes. Reason being, we always get referrals. Mm. Because if you've done something good, it always comes back to you. We are not expecting it. Yeah. But we have realized over time that the referrals we get mm -hmm. are from people we have trained mm. and they come back with even their organizations. Some of them come individually. Yeah. But by the time they are done with the training. They always come back with people from their organizations, from their sector mm -hmm. where they work. Mm -hmm. So that shows to a large extent that we are impacting value, and which is one of our goals at Lagos Data School. We ensure that value is being passed across whenever a learner is opportune to learn data. One question I like to I like to ask my guests that come on the MSME Good podcast by Lofty Inc. of course is. I give you a golden ticket to have dinner or breakfast or brunch with a role model or a mentor that you, ha you have not met yet. I know there are aspirations to meet our role models and our mentor. Who would that person be for you? Mm. Oh, I'm not put I'm not, I don't, I don't no. plan to put you in a tight not corner. At all. Not at all. <laughs> so if there's somebody I say, Edith, I have this ticket. Though. There's this, who are you looking up to that you really want to speak with? That you want, to, want the person to give you 30 minutes of their time? Of their time. Who would that person be? Hmm. You got me there. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there because I would say strange Barack Obama. Barack Obama? Yes. Okay, the former president of the <laughs> yes, United I would say Barack States. Obama. Yes. So I want to know why Barack Obama? Are there things that he has done that resonated with you or yes. principles, basically? Yes. Years back before he attended the presidency, yeah. 
I wake up every night to listen to his speech. Mm. And he has this way of connecting with the audience. Yeah. And when you are able to connect with your audience, sure. you're able to draw, mm -hmm. you draw whatever it is you want to achieve yeah. from them. So one thing I, I got from him was that ability to be able to connect with the audience. And if I were given the opportunity to meet with him, I would love to learn. He knows how to speak. <laughs> he knows how to convince. I hope Barack Obama <laughs> is, is watching this. If he wants to meet with you and have brunch or dinner, as the case may be. And yeah. that's the thing with things like this. You never can tell how far just you making this comment can go <laughs> and the kind of impact <laughs> it will have on your business as someone that runs a business. I also want you to speak to people that are looking up to you and say, oh, I want to be like Edith. I want to be the CEO of my own organization. I want to own my own business. I want to be able to run my business despite the challenge. What would be your advice to that person? Okay. My advice to them is you need to draw a map of where you want to go to, mm. of what you want to become. To some, it may be just watching others. Yeah. That's how you start. Yeah. To some, it might be taking the step and taking skills that you feel might impact your future. Mm. But one thing is certain, if you are consistent and persistent, and most importantly, if you are intentional in whatever you do, yeah. you can make it in life. So I would like to encourage everyone to always map their journey, know what they want to do, be intentional, and yeah, be intentional. I think that we're intentional. Okay, I also want to ask, yeah. if I wake you up from a very, 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 very nice sleep, and I say, I have a time machine. I want to take you five years back. Because <laughs> I, I know the challenges you have mentioned yeah. here, that this Lagos Data School that you're facing, but you're being tenacious with it. If I wake you up and say, Idi, I have a time machine. I want to take you five, six, seven, ten years back. Would you do this again? I would do this. And even more. And if I were given the opportunity, I want to meet my husband earlier. <laughs> because <laughs> he's one of my... Yes. Yeah. So what systems are very important. Say, yes, yes, you can say that because he has actually watched my growth mm. and he has supported me in every area. So if I were to go out like, yes, take me back, let's meet earlier, I would have achieved more. Are you sure yeah. you don't want to be in Maldives? Are you sure you no, don't want to be on the not beach? At all. Not at all. You still want to I, do this data analytics I, business? I will still do this. Okay, thank you so much, Edith Ubini Otori. Thank you for mm -hmm. coming to share your story with us. Because one of the key one of the key themes for us at Lofty Inc. and even for the MSME Growth Chat is we want to tell stories of business owners as because we've positioned ourselves as business development service providers. Yeah. And we can only do that if we showcase and tell the stories of those doing these businesses and also look for areas of collaboration and lofty ink that we can work on and even help you develop your business further. So thank you for being willing to share your story. I know that those watching will take lessons, business lessons from some of the things you have said here and we wish you all the best going forward. We hope that you will become a household face in data, in the whole data sector and the digital sector. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. So today, once again, another business owner telling their story, telling you how they got to where they are. It's always not a bed <laughs> of roses. It's always a journey that you surmount different hurdles. And in the end, even though the economy keeps evolving, as business owner, we see them keep thriving regardless of what the economic situation is at the point in time. So please, as it is my normal chance on the, this podcast, follow us on all our social media platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, on X, follow us on all our social media platforms, and you get to see a lot of this knowledge that we churn out on the MSME Growth Chat. The next episode promises to be as interesting as the previous one. So don't forget to click that subscribe button, punch on the button to get to hear more stories and more success stories of these business owners. Till I come again, I am Christian Amadi. Ciao, ciao.